Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this lecture, uh, we will be discussing about cutin, waxes, and seborrheic. Actually, these are compounds which help in plant defense against different herbivores or pathogen attack or different types of biotic and abiotic stresses. In the last lecture, we have learned about herbivory. Herbivory is the eating of plants by some insects and other microorganisms. Plants face pathogen attack. Plants face several abiotic stresses such as drought, salinity, and biotic stresses such as microorganisms which hamper the growth of crop plants. Plant defense is a multi-trophic interaction. There are uh, lots of stresses in plants which are below or above ground. In this slide you can see you can see that in above ground parts of plants there are pathogens, herbivores, carnivores, secondary carnivores, pollinators and competitor plants. In the same way in the below ground parts of the plants there are pathogens, herbivores, carnivores, symbionts, parasitic plants and competitor plants. All these so called stresses compete with plants for available resources or they damage plants by feeding on them. So plants undergo various modifications to undo the harmful effects of these different types of stressors. Yes, plants respond to attack by herbivores and pathogens. If plants undergo some sort of herbivore and pathogen attack, they do respond. They do respond through morphological changes or they produce some chemical signals or they produce some compounds like we are uh, discussing waxes, seborrheic and cutins. Plants use defense system to detect herbivory, prevent infection and combat pathogens. Herbivory is animals eating plants. It is a kind of stress. Plants encounter excessive herbivory with physical defenses such as thorns and chemical defenses such as distasteful or toxic compounds. Some plants even recruit predatory animals that help defend against specific herbivores. So you can see that plants produce either some chemicals or they have some morphological structures or even they recruit some animals which undo the harmful effects of herbivores. So plants use plenty of defense traits. These are mechanical traits such as toughness and spines. They possess chemical traits such as production of alkaloids, phenolics, terpenoids, latex, developmental and phenological defenses. These defense types can be classified with reference to their production. There are two types, constitutive and induced. In the constitutive defense type, the compounds are produced by and present in the plant irrespective of attack. These compounds or phenological structure or developmental structure or mechanical appearance of the plant is there irrespect of the attack if there is no attack these sort of defenses are present and if there is attack these are present so in constitutive defense pathogen attack or herbivore attack does not matter in the induced defense the chemicals are produced by and present in plant in response to attack in this sort of defense mechanisms, the traits are only adapted by plant after the attack of pathogen or herbivore. 
then these can be uh, classified into resistance traits and tolerance traits these traits resistant traits are those which reduce herbivory it is further subdivided into avoidance traits those traits that affect herbivore deter or repel herbivore in this type of resistance plants avoid the herbivores and antibiosis traits these are the traits where plants reduce herbivore performance second one is tolerance traits those traits that reduce the impact of herbivory on fitness here you can, you can see resistance resistant tolerant and susceptible plant if there are herbivores they eat plants you can see that resistant plant grow even tolerant plants grow longer but these susceptible plants are unable to grow and produce longer plants as do the tolerant and resistant ones so the benefits of defense are obvious in the presence of herbivores Now, if there are no herbivores, then cost of defense are obvious in the absence of herbivores. You can see that resistant and tolerant one remain the same, however, susceptible one can grow longer if there are no herbivores. So, plant defense mechanism can be further divided into passive and active and they are further subdivided into structural and chemical resistance traits in passive structural are wax cuticles cell walls stomata and endodermis in chemical resistance there are nutrients ph toxic compounds and enzyme inactivators in active or inducible resistance the structural resistance is based on cellulose deposition, lignification, abscission layers, wound barriers, and tyloses, while the chemical ones are phytoalexins and detoxification mechanisms. So, in this lecture, we are discussing vexes, sabrins, and cuticle. So, all these are passive resistance or constitutive resistance means that these compounds are present in plants ir irrespective of the pathogen attack or herbivory cutins vexes and suburins all plant parts exposed to the atmosphere are coated with the layers of lipid materials that reduce water loss and help block the entry of pathogen fungi and bacteria the principal types of these coatings are cutin sebarin and vexes these are made up of hydrophobic compounds which have water repelling properties these compounds are non-polar and these are made up of fatty acids are one type of hydrophobic Cutin is mostly found in the above ground parts of the plant. It is a macromolecule, a polymer composed of long fatty acid chains that are attached to each other by extra linkage, creating a rigid three dimensional network. It is a major component of plant cuticle, a multi layered secreted structure that coats the outer cell wall of epidermis on the aerial parts. Plant's cuticle is composed of a top coating of wax, often vary, often vary with the climate in which they live. In this slide, you can see that 
surface wax is present on the top layer of the plant then there is cuticle cuticle layer cell wall middle lamella plasma membrane tonoplast vacuole and epidermal cell you know better about the anatomy of the plant or different types of membranes present in waxes are complex mixture of long chain lipids that are extremely hydrophobic the most common component of waxes are straight chain alkanes and alcohol of 20 to 35 carbon atoms they are synthesized by epidermal cells they exuded they exuded through pores in the epidermal cell wall by mechanisms Suberin is formed from fatty acid but has a different structure from cutin. It is often within the roots. It can protect against pathogens and other damages. It can form transport barriers between the soil and the roots. Older part of roots are more subarized. Suberin is a cell wall constant. Endodermis has suberin side walls. All plant parts exposed to the atmosphere are coated with layers of lipid material that reduce water loss and help block the entry of pathogenic fungi and bacteria. The principal types of coatings are cutin, suberin, and waxes. Cutin is found on most above ground parts, suberin is present on underground parts, woody stems, and healed wounds. Waxes are associated with both cutin and suberin. Here you can see the structures of these hydroxy fatty acid that polymerize to make cutins. Common waxes components are straight chain alkanes and hydroxy fatty acids that polymerize along with other constants to make suberin. Cutin is a macromolecule as discussed in earlier slides, a polymer consisting of many long chain fatty acids that are attached to one and other by astral linkages creating a rigid three-dimensional network. Cutin is formed from 16, 0 and 18, 1 fatty acids with hydroxyl or epoxide groups situated either in the middle of the chain or at the end opposite the carboxylic function. This is the chemistry of cutin. Cutin is a principal constituent of the cuticle, a multi-layered secreted structure that coats the outer cell wall of the epidermis on the aerial parts of all herbaceous plants. The cuticle is composed of a top coating of wax, a thick middle layer containing cutin embedded in wax, the cuticle proper and a lower layer formed of cutin and wax blended with the cell wall substances pectin cellulose and other carbohydrates it has been suggested that in addition to cutin the cuticle may contain a second lipid polymer made up of long chain hydrocarbons which has been named cutin waxes are not macromolecules but rather complex mixture of long chain acyl lipids that are extremely hydrophobic the most common components of waxes are straight chain alkanes and alcohols of 25 to 35 carbon atoms. Long chain aldehydes, ketones, esters, and free fatty acids are also found in waxes. The waxes of all cuticles are synthesized by epidermal cells. They leave, they leave those cells as droplets that pass through pores in the cell wall by an unknown mechanism. The wax that forms the outer coating of the cuticle often crystallizes in an intricate pattern of rods, tubes, or plates. Certain patterns of these microstructures enhance water repellency, but increasing the roughness of the wax surface. This roughness prevents water from forming large contact areas with and thus from adhering to the already hydrophobic surface. Thus, water droplets from instantly water droplets from instantly on contact and carry away contaminating particles, cleansing the plant's surface. 
the phenomena was first described for the leaves of the leguminous lotus lotus japonicus and for that reason it is sometimes referred to as the lotus effect Suberin is a polymer whose structure is poorly understood. Like cutin, suberin is formed from hydroxy or epoxy fatty acids joined by astral linkages. However, suberin differs from cutin in that it has dicarboxylic acids, more long chain components, and a significant proportion of phenolic compounds as part of its structure. Suberin is a cell wall constituent found in many locations throughout the plant. Suberin is a principal component of the outer cell walls of all underground organs and is associated with the cork cells of the periderm, the tissue that forms the outer bark of stem and roots during secondary growth of woody plants. Suberin also forms at sites of leaf abscission and in the areas damaged by disease or Cutin waxes and suberin help reduce water loss and pathogen invasion. Cutin, suberin and their associated waxes form barriers between the plant and its environment that function to keep water in the pathogen water in and pathogens out. The cuticle is very effective in limiting water loss from aerial parts of the plant, but it does not block transpiration completely. Even with the stomata closed, some water is lost. The thickness of the cuticle varies with the environmental conditions. Plant species native to arid regions typically have thicker cuticles than do plants from moist habitats, but plants from moist habitat often develop thick cuticles when grown under dry conditions. Similarly, sun leaves and shade leaves of the same canopy often show different cuticle thicknesses.